All right, Tucker Carlson, Fox News, and what this means for the stock market in regards to Fox News Corp, right? Look, there's so much noise in the world right now. There's there's always so much noise in the world, but there's definitely noise right now. And the reality is, is there's stuff in the media, there's stuff in social media, and everybody wants to feel like they have the answer. Everybody wants to know the answer. Um, Tucker is a, a fairly in, incredibly popular guy, right? Okay, so with him being a popular guy, that affects a lot of things, right? Because the man's popularity definitely influences people's opinion. And the stock market is driven by the consumer. Okay, we I just got done posting about this. We just discussed this. The consumer drives the stock market. It's the everyday guy like you and me that's going to get out there and just make decisions on a whim that fluctuate that market and does this, what does this mean for the company itself? Okay, so let's break down the fluctuations in the market, which we've talked about before, but I want to, for those who are new to my channel or for those you know, who just may have forgotten. I want to reiterate this, okay? So fluctuations happen in the market. And as I've stated, it's driven by the consumer. It's not driven by like seasoned investors because seasoned investors are invested for long haul, right? They're going to invest for... Now, it happens where big firms and big investors they buy into a company and they're only there for a matter of months before they decide to sell or transition, right? This isn't commonplace though. Typically, they're gonna be in for a lot longer. They're gonna be in for multiple quarters. They're gonna be in for multiple years. They're gonna, you know, it, it's, it's a time thing, right? Because they see the company going in a certain direction and it's something that they wanna be a part of. Um, it's the consumers that are investing on a whim. It, they're not seasoned investors for one thing, or they allow their emotions to dictate what they do. Now, the thing is, is I've told you before, absolutely, I don't care how much of a seasoned investor you are, how skilled you are, or how long you've been investing in businesses, stock market, or, or anything for that matter, your emotions shouldn't drive it but you should be able to sleep well at night knowing that you've done, that you haven't gone against your own morality and the things you believe in, right? There's certain things that, uh, you know, the Oracle Omaha man, Mr. Warren Buffett himself, there's different companies that he said that, you know what, he feels like he wouldn't invest in just because he doesn't agree with what they do. Um, there's certain companies that he said, you know, I won't invest in because I feel like there's a level of morality in that and that it's just not for me. And, you know, see, these things are all OK. I think these that you should absolutely not go against your morality. But it's rare for a company to take such a stance on something or such a big change that it's really going to affect most seasoned investors' morality. Um, an example would be like Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch recently did a marketing campaign that affected a lot of people. It affected a lot of people. It didn't affect a lot of investors. A lot of people think it w thinks it would have, but it really didn't because ultimately, Shortly after, within weeks, um, Anheuser-Busch did things to correct their marketing department. Now, is that good enough to please and appease the, you know, daily consumer? I think a lot of people are still angry about the marketing choices they made, while some others are like, Yay, this is what they should have done. 
The reality is, is to a seasoned investor, it's hard to say. It's, it's hard to say because it was a big statement that they made. And it did go against the grain of what they have definitely portrayed as their marketing department for decades. So is this something that would have changed something? It absolutely could have for a lot of people. Now, when you look at the market, as many, you know, millions of dollars as, you know, had been lost and things like that. It was losses in sales more than stock value. Because again, the company actually did take a hit. It did. The company took a huge hit. But did the stock market take a hit? Not much. Now, does that mean you should invest in the company at this point? I don't know. Um, if you feel it's in line with your morality and if you feel like it's in line with what you, you know what? It, again, that's hard to say because at the end of the day, the choices that they've made are bad for the company. Now, this is a company that's been a staple for a long time when it comes to alcohol. Um, this is a company that for a long time has been synonymous with lots of things. They've been synonymous with representing, um, you know, America, uh, partying, um, you know, there's been, you know, a, a, a fun, excitement. There's, there's been de several different gimmicks that they've had throughout their many years of marketing. And those gimmicks, like what they've chosen in their recent marketing campaign with Dylan Mulvaney, um, has really put a, put a completely different take on all that. And definitely taken away from what they had been marketing towards for so long. And so do some did they maybe um, please someone? Probably. But the masses overall, the people they've been marketing to for decades, they definitely hurt that 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 complete dynamic and, and that market. And they've definitely caused some damage to the company. Fox News is a completely different situation. But see, this is what the, the people, um, this is what the people are doing lately, is they're wanting to take one. There's been, and, and, and pretty much everybody knows about Anheuser-Busch because everywhere's talking about it. I mean, they've talked about it on the, the you know, every social media platform, um, every different uh, daytime, nighttime talk show, everywhere's talking about it. So because everyone's talking about it, that was just a, a glimpse of my example. But there's honestly been several different marketing campaigns with several different aspects. And there's been several different companies that have done different things lately that everybody wants to pair all these things together. And they're not the same instance. They're not the same thing. Not at all. And Fox News is another one that they want to just slide right in there and the media want to say, well, here we go again. No, this isn't the same thing. And let me break it down for, for you for why it's not the same thing. First of all, Carlson is very popular. And because of that popularity, does it make sense that on some level, the everyday person, it's going to affect? Absolutely. But the thing is, is there's enough people that like him. There's enough people that dislike him. And there's also enough people that don't care. There's enough people who don't care. There's also a good amount of people like me. Now, I fall into this category. At the end of the day, I understand what Fox News is. See, for some reason, there's so many people that don't understand what Fox News is. Let's ask the question, what's Fox News? What is Fox News? Fox News is mainstream media. What is mainstream media? Well, mainstream media is media, it's television that is on here for all of us to watch that is generally available to most people and it's entertainment. It is. Um, now, the news aspect of Fox, um, 
should be, and many assume that it should be informative. And on some levels it's informative. Now, a lot of people have a misconception that it should be unbiased, which it's not, and which honestly it shouldn't be. Now, I wanna say, Corey, how could you say that it shouldn't be unbiased? Well, just because the reality is it shouldn't. Okay, of course it's biased. Everything's biased. If any human believes they're unbiased, you're lying to yourself. None of you are unbiased. I'm, un I'm not unbiased. I absolutely put my myself out here. I talk about it. I'm sitting here um, advising y'all and trying to educate, um, somewhat being entertaining on, uh, on occasion, but I'm trying to inform y'all how to work on your business, um, develop uh, your life skills, your business skills, and invest for your future, and develop things into a place where you can be financially free, have, um, you know, be prepared for retirement, be prepared for life, and all these different things, all while I continue to talk to you about my boys, I talk to you about my wife, I talk to you about my faith in God, uh, and the fact that I'm a Christian, the fact that I'm a capitalist, um, I, I talk about all these different things, this is completely biased, absolutely, because this is tailored to the person I am. And this is part of my business. This is a huge part of my business and what I do. Um, with all that, you know, considered, how could what I'm doing not be biased? How could what you're doing not be biased? Because it's tailored to who you are. Now, if I'm a fan of a person, or if I'm a fan of a business, or if I'm a fan of, I talk about, you know, Warren Buffett. There are plenty of people who don't, who think Warren Buffett's overrated. I don't understand that, but there's lots of people who do. There's lots of people who don't think that he's the, the man that some of us think he is. There's lots of people who don't buy into these things. There's a lots of people who are not Christians and are not believers. Is the things that I'm saying biased because I am? Of course they are. They're tailored to me. Now, if you can look past certain things, like you could be a, you can despise Buffett, but can gain some knowledge from listening to my channel, great, that's awesome. If you can be a non-believer or someone who's kind of been on the fence, like maybe you've been introduced to church, but you just not quite there, but yet you can sit here on my, and you know, enjoy my channel and enjoy my videos and maybe learn some things or maybe find, you know, and, and I'm not building myself up as if, oh, I'm gonna give you the answers. I'm just saying, if you could take from my channel some information or maybe you can, you know, get on my channel and, you know, give feedback and commentary and we can lift each other up, then, you know, that's great too. Does that still mean that I can possibly be unbiased? No, I'm of course I'm biased. But that doesn't mean that we can't have dialogue. That doesn't mean that we can't learn from one another just because I tailor things to me and just because you tailor things to you. And just because, like I said, journalists, There's a difference between mainstream media and journalism. <laughs> now you want to believe that even if you watch Fox, right? We're watching Fox, we're seeing reality TV shows, silly comedies, maybe a, a lawyer or cop drama or something like that. And you're like, okay, this is all entertainment. But all of a sudden the six o'clock news, the nine o'clock news, these things come on and you wanna tell yourself that is the news, that is truth. Of course it's maybe true. I'm not gonna call them liars. What I'm gonna say is that it's not about whether it's true or not. It's about, is it biased? Of course it's biased because they can't possibly report to you every single thing that's going on in the world. They have no time for that. You know, there's, there's a statistic about how many people or how many seconds it is between each person dying. 
Like somebody dies every like 2.3 seconds or something like that. And a child is born every so many seconds. And, you know, this and that. And you th you hear about the, you know, uh, natural disasters. Like one happens in the world somewhere every so many minutes. They would be on the news every single second of every single day and still never tell you about every single one of those. It would be impossible for them to not cherry pick what they want to tell you. Now, see, that's a problem for most people to understand and accept because anybody who leans to the right or to the left, everybody wants to believe that the guys that lean their way are unbiased and the guys that lean the other way are biased. But that's just not true. They're all biased and it's okay as long as they don't lie. Now, see, that's where it gets a little fuzzy. As long as they don't lie, it's okay for them to omit. It's okay for them to cherry pick. It's okay for them to tell you the stories that they like and leave out the ones they don't. It's okay for them to tell you, hey, so-and-so, there was a um, child abduction in North Austin. There was also a robbery, you know, uh, on the west side. And then there was also, let's talk about the junior high band and how they were out practicing today. And it was raining and how they decided, let's keep marching because this is important because they have a big game coming up and they've lost three in a row. Do we believe that they're gonna overcome this adversity and win the next game? And do you believe that the band being so dedicated is gonna inspire the football team to do better? Now, does that mean there was no other robberies? Does that mean there was nobody else um, you know, uh, injured, there was nobody else killed, there was um, no other, it, it, does it mean there was, an, of course there was more stuff, but did they decide to cherry pick the, hey, this person was robbed, hey, this person um, was abducted, and now let's get a fluff piece, and let's, you mention that for 10 seconds, that for 15 seconds, and let's talk for five minutes about the junior high band. They choose what they believe you want to hear and they choose what they what you what they believe you want to hear based on ratings how many people turned the channel they watch ratings okay and they watch how many people turn the channel during the fluff pieces people don't now oddly enough i find myself turning the channel i find myself Every now and then I get interested in those fluff pieces and I'm like, man, look at those kids. They're doing something cool. That's awesome. But a lot of the time I find that to be my opportunity to change the channel. I know a lot of other people that do also, but generally the masses love those parts. Generally, the masses stay locked in on that channel. Now, the reality is maybe that's their opportunity to go to the bathroom, go get a snack, you know, go make dinner, deal with the kids, and they just leave the TV on in the background. Don't really know. All I know is that they base it on ratings. They base it on like Nielsen's and things like that. They gather statistics to see how many people change their channel during certain pieces of the news. How many people change the channel during politics? Politics. How many people change the channel when they're talking about somebody getting gunned down? They change the channel. And if they change the channel, this affects what people talk about. People tune into Fox and typically lean towards more conservative views. People turn into uh, CNN and typically lean towards more liberal views or Democratic or, you know, things like that. Less conservative. People tune into certain channels looking for certain things. So when you get a particular, I've seen it. Nobody wants to believe it, but it's happened. There have been channels that tried to sway a little more one way or the other, and it doesn't work for them. Not only that, but at the end of the day, who owns the channel, it is not just not just a business. It is a business, but they own it. So they absolutely want to influence their business towards their side, 
towards their stance. I influence through my business, through my channel, that I am absolutely a Christian. I am absolutely a capitalist. I do believe in family. I do believe in building a business or building a future for yourself. I'm not going to get on here and tell you about how the nine to five job is always going to be the best option for you because of A, B, and C, but I support those because I try to be uplifting and supportive, that I support those who choose that lifestyle because I believe that it absolutely does make some people happy. But do I believe it's, it's, it's not for me. That's not for me. That's not for me and that's not what I wanna help people do. I feel like there's enough of the world encouraging people that way that I don't need to get out there and encourage people to do that. I feel like I need to encourage people to do something different. So that's what I do. That's what Fox does, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, every single media channel out there. They all get out there and they push their beliefs. When it comes to politics, people don't like that. They think people are, they think they're lying to them. And you know what the truth is, is that just like anything else, this is a, a psychological thing, okay? In, in social psychology, there's this concept and idea of when it's something extreme, mentally we associate it with the norm. Okay, so an example, there are absolutely corrupt politicians, but are the majority of politicians corrupt? Probably not. I mean, to be fair, probably not. But we assume, because we've heard enough about this politician, that politician, this president, this congressman, this senator, this rep, uh, you know representative, or this governor, mayor, whatever, if we, if we hear about enough politicians being corrupt that we're like, oh, they're all corrupt. Oh my gosh. And you know what? Maybe. Do we really know what people are thinking? No. Do we really know what their motives are? No. And do we really, can we say to an, you know, a, a, a certainty that we know that the candidate that we like and support and that we back it would be, you know, that they're not gonna be corrupt at some point or that they're that when they fight tooth and nail because they believe in their stance and that guy over there's playing dirty, that they might not get swayed to play dirty also. They're human. Of course they probably get swayed. When somebody else starts playing dirty, sometimes you feel the need to play dirty also. Is that right? No. Now, see, that's where people miss it, though. See, a lot of people will sit there and say, well, the other side started it. They're playing dirty. So therefore, it's OK that we play dirty back. No, see, you're missing it. See, a better example, because there's a kind of an idea going around that maybe all politicians are dirty. Well, let's 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 take a step back from that, especially since kind of a, a basis for this has been political anyways. So let's take a step back and let's talk about priests. This is an example I actually had when I was uh, back in a social psychology class back in uh, college, but we talked about this and the idea of a priest. We've heard in the media um, a few times about a priest being being a pedophile, being, you know, dirty, being ha having inappropriate contact with um, children or something like this, right? So then there became this stigma that all oh, priests must be dirty. Absolutely not. It couldn't be for, further from reality. The truth is, is that most priests aren't dirty. Most priests are living their life according to their faith and their belief. Most priests are walking a very, very fine line to do the best that they can for their parish. But all it took was a few, just a couple of bad apples that tainted the entire tree, so to speak. It gave a stigma and a perception to so many that that extremism 
must be the norm. Same thing with cops. It's another great example. There's been a lot of dirty cops. And see, I use the word a lot very loosely in this context, because when it comes to someone who has this kind of authority and power over daily citizens, and they use that power, they wield it over someone in such a demeaning or abusive manner, it leaves a big sting. It leaves a big stain. It leaves this bad taste in your mouth, this horrible stench on the police department. That's with one guy doing it. One guy leaves that, that, that bad aroma, a bad perspective. The thing is, we've caught several police. We've caught a lot of police doing the wrong thing. Does that mean the majority of police are bad? No, they're not. And you know what? The thing is, is that's statistically factual. Now, some people may think, oh, Corey, you just don't know. No, actually, I do. I've had this conflict and this discussion with several people that I know personally. And the reality is that this uh, police brutality and abuse of power, this isn't new. This, these people who jumped on the social media and, you know, um, uh, Black Lives Matter and all these different things. And they wanted to talk about how we can't believe this is happening. You can't believe this is happening? Really? I grew up in the 80s hearing about how it was happening back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. This has been going on for a 100 years, and people are just now catching it on their smartphone. Let's break it down, okay? When it comes down to it, people are terrible sometimes. Not everybody's a moralistic person. Not everybody believes in the good of man or the good of, you know, just having good moral fiber and being kind to other people, loving one another. And some people get so corrupted based on the things that they encounter, they become, they, they, they begin to look at the world the wrong way. There's politicians who have dealt with so much dirty deeds. They've seen so many people fight dirty on the other side of the lines that they just felt like they couldn't help it anymore. Police officers the same. They've dealt with such the bottom of our society So like they couldn't, like they broke. I mean, stop playing fair. Am I condoning any of that? No, absolutely not, I'm not. There's some people who just, they already have questionable character even before any of that. There are just bad negative people out there. There is evil in the world. All these things take place. So it doesn't matter what scope you are in, what level in, in your business or what line of work. Oh, well, cops are just good. No, there's no such things because they are people. And so there are bad people who became police officers. There are bad people who became politicians. There are bad people who become all these different things and news reporters. Okay, so there's a difference between the mainstream news and journalism, as I told you in the beginning. So. Journalism is people who seek out truth. They seek truth. Truth. That means it, they, they're not trying to seek what they believe in, but in that idea of trying to seek truth, they chose what truth they were going after in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So they knew where they were looking in the first place. They looked to see uh, this, or they looked to see that, and then they tried to find evidence to prove it. That's journalism, man. But the media doesn't do that. The media, that's not their responsibility. They have a responsibility to their viewers, to keep their viewers tuned in and happy. 
That's it. Tuned in and happy. So if fluff pieces make them happy, okay. If being liberal makes them happy, okay. If being conservative makes them happy, okay. They've got a responsibility to keep their primary viewer happy, which at the end of the day is gonna make a lot of other people unhappy. They can't please everyone. They can only please generally slightly more than half. That's it. So let's get back to the basic point. And I know I've kind of talked a lot. It's kind of been a heavy topic that I feel like merited this discussion. What Tucker and his departure how does it affect Fox News as far as the stock market? Only the stock market. Because I think, honestly, time will tell in how it affects the company as a whole. I think time will tell. Because the reality is there's a lot of people who loved him. And there's a lot of people who don't. And there's a lot of people who seem, see him as having a lot of integrity, while others do not. I honestly... I don't see the man having a lot of integrity. I don't. I think at one time he did. I think now he gets on there and he spins his stories. But I'm not mad at him. He's got a platform. He's working for a business. He's not working for the people. The people think that he's working for them and therefore they say and believe and expect that any reporter or media journalist or host or anchor or any of these things are going to speak only truth to them because they're working for them. No, they're not working for you. They're working for a business. And that business is catering to the majority of the masses or to their viewers. And maybe their viewers aren't the majority. That's frequent. Maybe their viewers are a small percentage but as long as those viewers stay tuned in, that's all that matters. So how does this affect the stock market? It honestly hasn't. Let's be real. So a lot of people, I've seen so many articles, the headlines, oh, the Fox News is taking such a hit. There were so many viewers who tuned in to Tucker on uh, Twitter and saw his you know, few minutes of a feed and, but this is how many tuned into mainstream media. Okay, that's fine. And that's truthful. Saying simple statistics, like this is how many tuned in here, this is how many tuned in there, those are factual. But the idea that the stock market has taken a hit, look at the numbers, the numbers do not lie. The reality is from yesterday to today, Fox News Corp, is up 9%. It's up 9. Now, from January to today, from January to today, it's down 5. Now, if you look at overall the entire last 12 months, there's a whole lot of fluctuation, and it's like this. Honestly, from an investor standpoint, I would never invest in Fox News. Not only because I'm just not a fan of media corporations and I'm just not a fan of, you know, as morally, I have my differences with pretty much all of them. Business wise, they're not big investments. They're not reasonable investments. Now, if you believe in Fox, you believe in CNN, you believe in MS, you, I don't care. If you believe in these companies, I'm not advising you don't buy it. I'm not telling you, you believe in it, don't put your money there. I'm telling you that take your feelings, your beliefs, your whatever aside, and just look at this as a stock investment, simple, basic numbers. Can I make money? It's not reasonable to invest in a company like Fox. That's pre-Tucker, that's post-Tucker, 
that's at any time. Because just like any other media channel, even when they try to stay consistent with their viewers, viewers are fickle because they're people. They're going to go through times of just getting bored and not wanting to watch the news. That's it. I'm over it. I'm not watching news anymore. I've gone through multiple phases of that in my life, and rarely do I watch the news lately. I get my news from other sources. Now, I catch it from time to time. I do. Because I feel like it's important to kind of know what's going on, know what people are saying. But at the end of the day, I rarely spend time watching the news, the mainstream media. Like I said,